Hello, and welcome to episode 498 of the official Establish the Run.com podcast. My name is Adam Levitan, as always, joined by Evan Silva for an AFC team by team podcast. Ton of injuries in the AFC in week 13. Evan, how's it going? Yeah, I mentioned on the NFC pod that there were a ton of injuries in general in week 14, but you're right, or in week 13, but they're lopsided toward the AFC. So we'll be hitting on all that. Yep. On today's show, we are going to go team by team through each AFC squad, talking about what we saw in week 13, what it means going forward. Before we get into it here, I want to remind everyone NBA is in full swing. If you care about NBA at all, you want to play DFS, you want to bet props. It The market is so, so, so much different than the NFL. There's just not as many eyes on it. There's no one doing projections like our team is doing projections for both DFS and props. So head to the subscribe page, check out everything we have for NBA. Also, there are playoff best ball contest open on our friends underdogfantasy.com right now we do have rankings up we do have a strategy article up for attacking those playoff best ball formats it's really nuanced not only do you have to think about players you also have to think about what teams are going to be there how many games they're going to play etc etc if you have not been to underdog fantasy yet promo code etr will get you up to 100 dollars sign up bonus that's promo code etr underdogfantasy.com all right baltimore One of the biggest injuries of the week was to Lamar Jackson. I think he kind of escaped something serious here. It sounds like nothing too bad, a mild sprain of his knee, but still unlikely to play in week 14. Maybe he gets back for week 15 or week 16. The question becomes, how much can we trust Tyler Huntley? We have a bunch of data and tape on Tyler Huntley now. What we know is they're not going to change their scheme, right? Tyler Huntley plays the similar way to Lamar Jackson plays. Tyler Huntley, though, turns the ball over way more, gets sacked way more. One thing he's been better at than Lamar, though, is getting the ball to Mark Andrews lately, that's for sure. What do you think about mm-hmm. Tyler Huntley? Anything else on the Ravens? Yeah, we saw him a decent amount last year. He runs like a 4-4. Mm-hmm. Um, he's really fast. He had 10 for 41 and a touchdown on the ground in this game. You're right. He's just a very poor man's version of Lamar. I'm a little worried, more worried about Lamar, I think, than you may be. PCL injury, that can be really tricky. Man, I don't want my dual threat quarterback messing around with, you know, ligament sprains in his knee. That's fair. So it'll be interesting to see. But you're right. The the, the decent amount of, of data that we have suggests that Tyler Huntley will force the ball to Mark Andrews. Um, so I, I'm I'm staying very optimistic about Mark Andrews. I think it's also important to note that again, and as, as we've kind of discussed, like a lot of scrubs around Mark Andrews in the Baltimore pass catcher core. You know, we'll be able to play defenses against the Ravens now, I think. Um, So, yeah. Definitely. And by the way, uh, shout out to Will Sue, I believe. I hope I'm saying his last name right, who won the Millie Maker last year with uh, Tyler Huntley having like a 35 ball against the Packers. That was his best game. Uh, Huntley's best game by far. That's right. Last year. Mark Andrews lines with Tyler Huntley as the quarterback have been 453-0, 689 10-136-2, 11-115-1, and 8-73-0. I mean, Mark Andrews has gotten it done, and Isaiah likely banged up his shoulder in this game in Week 13. We'll see what his status is for Week 14. Let's go to the Bills. So we've been talking about this for a while, and it just was not happening. And then just all of a sudden, out of the blue on Thursday, and by the way, this was not a short week because the Bills played Thanksgiving, and then they had the long week to get ready for a Thursday game. But anyways... They finally got James Cook in there. The snaps in this game were Devin Singletary, 33, James Cook, 32, Naheem Hines, 23. And Cook actually led the way in opportunities with 20. I'm curious if you think that's sticky at all, the James Cook usage and anything else you saw from Buffalo, who got a good win in New England last Thursday. Yeah, and it seemed like they were even trying to get Naheem Hines involved. He wound up with very few touches, but he played a decent amount of snaps. 23 snaps for Naheem Hines. yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's a, a three-way RBBC, and that's just – it's tough, man. I mean, I get what they're trying to do. You know, they're trying to add explosiveness on offense. James Cook definitely has that to a greater extent than Devin Singletary. I think it's going to be pretty frustrating in fantasy if they continue to use the three-man RBBC. You you also have Josh Allen in there poaching, you know, rushing stuff, especially in the scoring position. You know, it, it was exciting to see more James Cook. I just – I don't know if we're going to be able to trust them in fantasy. So this team doesn't run the football very much, and they don't throw it running back at a very high rate 
either. And so, you know, the running back just is not that, that, that valuable. But yeah, it's current, certainly James Cook has a chance now being part of this offense and um, making explosive plays. The other thing I note here, Isaiah McKenzie had the big game on Thanksgiving, kind of came back to earth a little bit here, but still 26 routes on 37 dropbacks. He's settling in ahead of Cleo Shakir, clearly. Bengals. Mark Chase looked incredible, man. And shout out to Mark and, and our projection guys. You know, we didn't have any docs, any limitations on Jamar Chase whatsoever in this game. Thought that he could have played week 12. They hold him out. He gets in for week 13. Jamar Chase looked explosive and awesome. I think that Joe Mixon will get back for the next game. But Hayden Hurst went down with a calf injury in this game. Mitchell Wilcox ended up running 23 routes. Don't think he'll be able to command a very high target share, though. Incredible win. Uh, not incredible, but very, very good win for the Bengals here at home against the Chiefs. What do you see out of Joe Burrow and the boys? Hayden Hurst got hurt in this game yep. and did not return. I remember looking, he was on the sidelines. They uh, clearly had taken his helmet away. Yep. Concussion? Is that it correct? Was, it was calf, and I don't think he's going to play in week 14. Okay, okay. Um, so uh, Mitchell Wilcox was like the next guy up. Yep. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to be able to do anything with, with him. But um, I don't know Joe Burrow continues to ball. I think he's either n- number three or number four overall fantasy quarterback right now. Uh, yeah, and I agree with you. Jamar Chase looked absolutely awesome. They were clearly very comfortable with his health because, I mean, they were manufacturing stuff for him. He yeah. got a lot of easy catches and run after catch opportunities. So good to go rest of the way. He should be a big time difference maker down the stretch. And like I said, I do think Joe Mixon will get cleared this week, but the Pirine stuff just goes back to when people say running back doesn't matter. Yeah, it's exaggerated. Yeah, it's a joke. Uh, you know, obviously running backs can make a difference for their team, but do you see really any difference in team play when you take out Joe Mixon and put in Samaja Pirine? Like, no, you know. And, and, and their running game, no matter who's been in there, it has uh, continues to be very efficient. I mean, Samaja Pirine did ha- not have a run longer than 10 yards in this game. He still averaged five yards per carry on 21 rushing attempts. Um, so their, their r- running game after a really slow start has been just super bankable. Let's go to the Cleveland Browns. I mean, they were waiting so long to get Deshaun Watson under center. We talked about it last week. I did not think that the upgrade from Brissett to Watson was going to be that striking. I'd never thought in a million years, though, that Watson would play worse than Brissett has played pretty much at any point this year. You can make excuses. He was rusty. He hasn't played in a year. He's had incredible incredible stuff uh uh you know on his own doing people would would argue but uh off field stuff you make excuses but he was just downright bad what do you think of deshaun watson's first game as a brown anything else on them going forward yeah he was awful i mean it was a very very disappointing performance i wonder if he has if he has another one of these do they start talking about going back to percent i mean they're they're not gonna but you know do, do people start saying that I mean, they have so much invested in Deshaun Watson at this point, um, but he was horrible. I mean, horrible. again, first game in 700 days, so he definitely has, like, excuses there, but it was really bad. Really bad. And, I mean, they're thin to make the playoffs, but they're alive, I think, in theory. They're 5-7. and seven. Right now, they'd have to win out, you know, so I don't know. I mean, it is what it is. Um, Denver. So Jerry Judy got back. Only played 20 out of 53 snaps. Corlin Sutton came into the game with some illness. He was fine, but he hurt his hamstring. The thing about the Greg Dolchich usage is like, when you're getting usage like the way Greg Dolchich was getting it, eventually you're going to have a good game. It's just like hard not to when you're as athletic and talented as he is and you have that role. He's essentially playing like a wide receiver role for them. It's just going to be really, really volatile because the offense is so, so, so bad. They're down. They didn't score a touchdown again in this game. They're down to 1.2. Touchdowns per game, threatening the record for incompetence in terms of touchdowns scored in a season. What do you see out of the Broncos' latest inept performance? They just cannot score. I mean, their offense is so bad. Uh, you know, and they've lost a bunch of guys. But I mean, it, it's it, it's on Russ and and, and Nathaniel Hackett. Um, yeah, Dulcich in college was a seam stretching vertical tight end. That's what he's been in the NFL. Jerry Judy came back, but. It's hard to rely on this passing game because, I mean, you know, you're, we're getting less than two, 200 yards a week. I mean, and then bef- that could spread out, you know. Before the season, I think I said something idiotic, like the problem with the Broncos is that they have too many good players. Like, how are they going to feed all these guys? It turns out they have like nothing. They can't even score. So, yeah, uh, 
really bad for the Broncos. The Russ Wilson bathroom tracker continues to cook. Some guy out there is like making videos now. And obviously there's tons of tweets, you know, what'll happen more touchdowns for Russ Wilson this year or bathrooms in the house he bought up in Cherry Hills. And uh, the bathrooms is a big favorite right now. Um, Houston, 10 targets in this game for Nico Collins with no Brandon Cooks. Um, You know, it's going to be really inefficient. The targets aren't worth a ton. But when you're getting 10 targets and Nico Collins has some talent, uh, I think he's at least in play. I thought Damian Pierce played pretty well in this game. It's just the team is just like never scoring enough to really have huge touchdown opportunities for Damian Pierce. So it's a little bit tough. What you see out of the Texans who gave up three defensive touchdowns. In other words, Brown's defense scored three times on this offense. Yeah. I don't really have anything to add to what you said there. I mean, this is a pretty lifeless offense. Damian Pierce is a good back. I think that the concerns about, you know, is he, is he running to a, into a rookie wall or anything like that? I, I think I'm not worried about that. Um, He's a good he's a good running back. It's just really, really a, a horrible team. Let's go to the Colts. Jonathan Taylor usage is really, really good. It continues to be even in spots where they're down or they're expected to be down. I mean, JT usage is really, really, really good right now. The tilting thing for me, and maybe it was because he was sick or whatever, but we saw Jelani Woods have the breakout. And so Colin Granson's back for this game, and they just really limit Jelani Woods' role. They don't really play him much at all in this game. I thought he earned it, man. I thought he earned another chance to be this pass catching tight end for them in this game. Did not happen. What you see out of the Colts who got smacked by the Cowboys. Yeah, just they just never really had a chance. You know, it's just such a bad matchup for the Colts and their, you know, late career, rag armed, immobile quarterback, you know, and I mean, they're giving the ball to the other team. I mean, the Cowboys just teed off on them, you yeah. know, so. The Colts have a bye next, probably a, a much needed buy for them. But yeah, I, I do have, uh, we did that uh, 10K team, uh, me and, and Leone and Dink, and uh, we have Jonathan Taylor, which I think is good, except it's like, oh God, week 14, we need to win. And these guys got a freaking buy. So uh, part of my tilt there, but yeah, really frustrating with the week 14 buy. Um, okay, Jacksonville. Uh, Travis Etienne was not affected by the foot. You know, I thought there was like some small chance, you know, five, 10% that they would limit him a little bit. He didn't want to give him the full workload. They get a scare. Talked about that a little bit more on the solo pod if you want more on the Etienne stuff. But he ended up playing 49 out of 56 snaps, get 16 out of 17 running back touches. Jaguars just didn't play well. And so he wasn't able to have a big game. Usage was still really, really good for Etienne though. What do you see out of the Jaguars loss up in Detroit? Yeah, a big and unexpected step back for the Jaguars offense, which had come into this game playing really well. Um, And it's just the Lions defense has has really gotten better as the season has progressed. Uh, Christian Kirk is still a guy that you can rely on week in and week out. Uh, Six for 104 on eight targets. The great, well, once great, Zay Jones. Seven targets, three drops, two catches, 16 scoreless yards. Yeah, I, I, I was, um, you know, I had a lot of positive takeaways from Travis Etienne's usage on field participation in this game, um, but you know, they just never got anything going offensively. I'd also add that some of the concerns about Travis Etienne's pass catching stuff that we heard in the preseason, I mean, I don't want to say it's, he's a rookie, right? So he can certainly get better, but right now he's not earning a lot of targets, period, you know, so for what it's worth. Uh, Kansas City. I think we can give it up on Sky Moore for this year. I'm not giving up on Sky Moore permanently, but I think for this year, we got to give it up. No Kadarius Tony, no McCole Hardman again, and only 10 routes in this entire game for Sky Moore. I mean, they clearly think Justin Watson is giving them more over the last two weeks. And by the way, Tony Hardman had been out for both these games and Juju was limited in one of them. Only 25 routes on 77 dropbacks for Sky Moore. So I'm giving up on him for this year. I'm not giving up on him permanently though. What do you think of the Chiefs in their loss to Cincinnati? Yeah, pretty disappointing um, for Sky Moore. And I mean, I played him in fantasy at thirty one hundred on on DK. Yeah, and just just didn't 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 go the way that I I, I hoped, you know. And he did have six uh, targets in consecutive games coming into this one. Um, it seemed like the the trajectory w- was pointed skyward. Uh, no pun intended. 
but you know, I, I'm with you. It's just uh, may, we got to give up the ghost here. Uh, I thought McKinnon looked really good in this game, and he had been like dealing with an injury, mm -hmm. um, so he's going to remain pretty heavily involved behind Pacheco. Yeah, yeah, and I mean they have a solid backfield. You know, it's not spectacular, but for the way that they play, I mean Pacheco can run, and McKinnon is very good in the pass game. Um, Las Vegas. The calf thing with Josh Jacobs, I mean, ever since it happened, the dude can't be stopped. It makes me think that the calf thing is either like he's getting an injection or whatever. It's just not that big a deal. 107 out of 137 snaps the last two weeks for Josh Jacobs. That's led to 67 touches, 453 yards from scrimmage, and three touchdowns. And one thing about this offense, it's kind of reminding me of when Antonio Brown and Le'Veon Bell were like dominating for the Steelers. They score. They score a lot. And it only goes through two guys. Like you can play in DFS, Jacobs and Adams together, mm -hmm. just like we used to play Le'Veon Bell and Antonio Brown together all the time when they were at their peak. Devontae Adams is now on pace for 112 catches, 1,666 yards, and 17 touchdowns. I mean, that might be better than the best season he ever had in Green Bay. Raiders are starting to play much, much better. And man, it's all through Jacobs and Adams. Mm -hmm. What do you think of their win over the Chargers? Yeah, I thought that uh, Derek Carr had a, a pretty good game here. Um, he only had 16 completions, but he hit Devonta Adams on the 45-yard flea flicker for a touchdown. Uh, Adams deep downfield, I think it was like 30 yards uh, down into the, the corner of the end zone. Adams made a great uh, adjustment on that one. Uh, and then Foster Moreau down, down the sideline for 32 yards. I mean, they hit some big-ass chunk plays in this game. Uh, it'll be interesting to see, are they going to get Renfro and Waller back at any, cause I, I haven't even heard anything about them. I have not heard anything either. Yeah. It does not sound good. Um, chargers. I mean, they got 74 plays off against Las Vegas and they only managed 386 yards. <sighs> really, really surprising. I think they need big Mike back out there to give them something down the field that big Mike is expected to get back into practice this week, but man, multiple aggravations of his ankle, certainly scary in this game. Keenan Allen and Josh Palmer combined for 25 targets, but yeah, just disappointing game for the offense as a whole. What'd you see out of the chargers? Yeah. You know, I think they need is Sean Payton. Um, yeah. Yeah. That'd be an awesome hire for them. Uh, get him with Justin Herbert. Actually the offense is technically like the terminology is all the same because Joe Lombardi mm -hmm. comes from, uh, Sean Payton. I think that'd be a great, great match. But I like that. Yeah. 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 You're seeing, you know, one of the, like the thesis of the, of the play on a lot of the bus stuff with Saints guys was just like, listen, man, Sean Payton makes a big, big, big difference. Period. Let's go to Miami. This was weird. I thought Jeff Wilson was in front, but Raheem Mostert comes off the injury report and now he's back in front in this game, at least 28 to 17 in snaps over Jeff Wilson, 18 to 11 in routes, seven to three in opportunities. Did not play a good game, did the Dolphins. Obviously, very difficult circumstances here going to San Francisco, one of the best defenses in the league. What do you think of the backfield split? Anything else on the Dolphins? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to think of the backfield split. I was I was just as surprised as you. Um, I mean, they only had eight carries in the game right. uh, as a team. But I don't know. We'll, we'll have to do some touch-and-go stuff there. Uh, trying to predict the, the outcome of their backfield going forward. Tyreek Hill goes off. Jalen Waddle gets hurt. Tyreek Hill goes nuts. Yeah. Jalen Waddle, it sounds like he is going to be okay for this upcoming game. We'll, we'll, we'll have to follow the, the practice reports. Yeah, both Tua and Waddle got banged up in this game, but didn't look like he was serious at all. I'd expect both Waddle and Tua to be okay for week 14. New England. I don't know if you saw, I'm sure you saw the Mac Jones uh, uh, outburst. He got caught uh, screaming on the sideline. He said, throw the blanking ball. Blanking quick game sucks. At least that's what I thought he said. Um, clearly, the offense is operating very close to the line of scrimmage. They just don't have a ton of explosive players. Everything runs through Ramondre. Ramondre led the team in targets with eight. He now has 20 plus percent target share in seven straight games. That is a massive number for a running back. There's a lot of problems with this offense mm -hmm. right now. What do you think of the Patriots who had an ugly loss on Thursday to the Bills? Yeah, the offense is just, I mean, it's rough. I We can, we anticipated it being rough entering the season. I mean, Mac Patricia is like running it. Mac Jones just, again, he finished last season really slowly and he has not made any progression in year two. I mean, it's I, like, I'm, I'd be worried about him. Mm-hmm. 
Let's go to... Oh, yeah, and just to be clear on the Ramondre stuff, like literally league best usage, 53 out of 54 snaps with Damian Harris out. I haven't seen any updates on Damian Harris, but it looked bad enough on Damian Harris to where I think my, my guess would be that he'd be out this week too, So, but we'll see there. Jets. The only thing that made me more excited than the DeAndre Swift one that brought me more joy than DeAndre Swift role change this week was the Elijah Moore role change this week. Elijah Moore ran 45 routes on 59 dropbacks. Elijah Moore was the slot receiver, only 12 routes for Braxton Berrios here. And I know Elijah Moore didn't show up in the box score, but this is the best role he's had literally all season by an order of like 2X or 3X. So that's really, really good to see on Elijah Moore. I also thought Zonovan's role was really, really good. And even though Ty Johnson played a majority of the passing down stuff, Zonovan still, like Jets, running backs are going to catch the football because Mike White, that's just like what he does. So I like Zonovan, man. We talked about emptying the clip on Zonovan last week. I feel good about that going forward, even if Michael Carter gets back. What do you think of the Elijah stuff? Anything else on the Jets? Yeah. Um, I, I wonder what the extent of Michael Carter's injury is because he's dealing with an ankle injury, and that is usually a high ankle sprain, and we don't like those. Yeah. So um, – I don't know. We'll have to see. It did seem like he was somewhat close last week. I mean, he was listed as doubtful. We'll just have to see. I, you know, and I, I didn't have. I, I had skepticism of of Zonovan Knight last week, and I was wrong. He was the pretty clear lead back ahead of Ty Johnson, the passing down back, and James Robinson just kind of mixing in. Um, Garrett Wilson is freaking awesome. Like, yeah, the, dude, dude is awesome. And I was looking at like the uh, the target and. Um, you know, the, the, just the, the distribution of the passing game under Mike White and Garrett Wilson is just freaking dominating it. So I would feel really good about playing him every week as a wide receiver too. Jets schedule the rest of the way is very good for pass game stuff. They play Bills, Lions, Jaguars, Seahawks, Dolphins to finish. And so I, I know I took some Garrett Wilson uh, offensive rookie of the year at, I forget what number. I got, but um, yeah, I, I think Alave is ahead right now. I think Alave has had a better year to date right now, but I think with Mike White in there and with the way Garrett Wilson is playing and with the target share, like Evan said, and the schedule, I think Garrett Wilson is probably going to end up, would be my bet to end up winning it um, in the end. Not to take anything away from Garrett Wilson or Kenneth Walker or Damian Pierce, who have all had, had, I think, pretty good years, but I think the way Garrett Wilson finishes will be enough. Um, Steelers. So Jalen Warren came back from his hamstring issue, but only played 13 snaps. Benny Snell got in there for nine. Najee got the rest. George Pickens, you know, I've, I've been trying to stop clicking George Pickens because it's a play that, like, makes sense on paper, but just doesn't happen. He's down to 1.18 yards per route run, 80th among 103 qualifiers. A little bit scary there on George Pickens. You know, I'm not sure that hits his fault. Yards per route run obviously bakes in quarterback play scheme, which has been promised for Pittsburgh. And I'm not giving up on George Pickens, but it's just been a struggle for him to earn targets this year. What do you think about the Steelers who got a narrow win in Atlanta? Yeah, I mean, just to add to that, I would just say like Deontay Johnson literally does the same thing every week. He gets double digit targets and he finishes like with 60 yards or fewer every single week. Um, he hasn't been breaking the, you know, the turning it, turning his short stuff into long gains. And so, I mean, he's like, God, he's tough to play. I mean, you see the target volume. And it's like, man, you know, this guy's getting 9, 10, 11 targets every single week. He's not doing anything with him. Yeah. Let's go to – ooh, last one here is Tennessee. God, the trailing injury was so bad, man. I mean, I talked about it a little bit on the solo pod, but that was a really scary one. And, and you know, as much as we've debated trailing before the season and during the season here at ETR, you know, I, I, I was rooting for him, and that one's scary. I think he's probably going to end up missing time. One thing that we saw in this game – was with them trailing and trailing big and trailing also out. I'm going to mess up this name, but they got Chig Okonkwo going finally. Season high in snaps. He played 32 out of 45 snaps. Season high in routes, 20 routes on 31 dropbacks, 19% target share, five targets, 468-0. This guy is an athlete um, at a position in which a lot of people out there are just desperate. What do you think about Chig? as an ad this week, Evan, and anything else on the Titans, who I presume will be without Traylon Burks this week. I'll have more in the matchups column because I, I need to look more into everything about Chig. But, I mean, we've been talking about him. He, he pops out big time. Yeah. Um, and he's an awesome dynasty hold. 
Uh, I, I, th- I think he's probably going to be the, the Titans pass catching tight end of the future. I mean, he is whenever he's got an opportunity, he's crushed it. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of people are on us in August because we are lower than market on things like Derrick Henry and Nick Chubb and higher than market on things like Christian McCaffrey and Austin Eckler and DeAndre Swift type guys. You can see it now with Tennessee like struggling. You can see how it can go bad for Derrick Henry. You can see how it goes bad for Nick Chubb at times. And so that's just like how it plays out. Just wanted to put that out there. As a reminder, just from a strategic standpoint, especially when you're playing in half PPR or full PPR, it's, it's really hard when your team is bad for guys like Derrick Henry and Nick Chubb to get there. And we, we mentioned it on the NFC pod, but uh, the Titans fired their GM, John Robinson. It was a shocking fire. I mean, and he has not been perfect lately. He's got too much stuff wrong. A.J. Brown goes off against the Titans after they traded him away. Um you know, and that I guess that was the final straw, I guess. Yeah. But that's a dude who John Robinson is like very well respected in the community in Nashville. I mean, he's like people love him around the league. And that was that was, it, it, it was it was very surprising. I, I think that even the, the Titans beat writers, they, they were not anticipating that. He just got an extension in February. They're gonna have mm-hmm. to pay him for the next four years. Something must have really gone wrong. Yeah. I don't think like the AJ Brown yeah. thing isn't enough to pay a guy for the next four years. You know, Todd Downing, their OC got like a DUI recently. I, yeah. I wonder if they were like, and then they like didn't do anything. Yeah, I wonder if ownership was like, you know, this is not cool the way that you're handling this situation. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. There, there's more to the story. I'm, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think there's more to the story for sure. Cause you don't fire a guy. You just gave an extension to him, pay him for the next four years because right. AJ Brown, like that was, they should have seen that coming. The AJ Brown stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. That is going to do it for this AFC team by team pod. Appreciate you all being here. If you can hit the subscribe button, whether you're watching on YouTube or anywhere podcasts are found, we'd really, really appreciate it. It goes a long way to helping us out for Evan for producer Luke. I'm Adam. Good luck, everybody.